painting a new picture. And I hadn't, uh, hadn't heard the theme till recently, but I got pretty excited because some of you know that I do get involved with the arts ministry here. And uh, we do variety shows, we do talent shows, we, do, uh, we play the Grinch at Christmas. We do all kinds of things that are a lot of fun. Um, and Kirby, your time is coming. You will not escape me. We will be working together coming up now that we're open uh, again. So I was excited about the arts element of it, and then it turns out, well, y'all, in my private life, I'm also a project manager. And so I was like, okay, well, how do we do that? How do we paint a new picture? What are the steps? What do we need to do? What's A, B, C, D, E? And I can project manage the crap out of anything. So I started thinking, you know, what do we have to do? And I made a little list, okay? Um, what do we need if we're going to paint a new picture? We need a canvas, okay? We need a canvas. And the canvas is, in this case, our lives. We already have it. It's freely given. The picture that we're making, we will see because we will be in it. We'll be walking through it, living in it, being as it. So we have a canvas. The beautiful thing about the canvas, too, is that Sometimes we might not think that we necessarily like the way the canvas looks right now, which is why we're talking about painting a new picture. Guess what? Bright, new, white, clean, fresh canvas is free, and we can start all over anytime we want. So we do have our canvas. That's the first thing we need. Then what does an artist need? The artist needs an easel. So the easel is the support for the canvas, right? It holds it up. And guess what that is? That's the law. That's the law holding up the easel. I mean, the easel is the law holding up the canvas because it is a law. If I leave my studio and I come back in a couple of days, that easel is still going to be holding up that canvas. The easel is not going to be hanging from the light shade, and the canvas is not going to have turned into rubber and be a doormat now. I mean, these things are absolutely still the law, and when I come back to it, it's there ready for me. So it's up to me how much I interact with it but it is the law, so thank you to the easel. Then we need the palette. I looked at some pictures and it was in some of the promotional materials. This is the, this is the little plate for the artist with the colors on it. We need the palette. Okay, the palette is where the paint is gonna go, right? So the palette, I saw that as like, that's our consciousness. This is my own awareness. I, I, I have this thing. I don't necessarily have anything on it yet, but I do get to help choose what goes on it and I get to choose how I dab it and how I play with it, but how I can receive what goes on that palette is up to me. So there's a consciousness element in the palette. That's my individual awareness, and it also, because we work together, becomes a group awareness. We have a palette, and I have a palette, but we also share a, a larger palette. Then, what do we need next to be able to do anything? We need the paint, and we need some brushes. And I saw the paint and I said, you know what? That's paint is the inspiration that I get from spirit. And it goes, blah, 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 blah. Look at all these opportunities you have here on the palette. And I can pick up one of my brushes and I can start to use it. But uh, without a palette of consciousness to receive the ideas, the inspirations, meeting the right people, seeing the next opportunity, without a palette that's open and ready, I'm hiding my palette. Here comes the paint. <laughs> all over and I can't see it and I can't use it but if I have my palette spirit gives the ideas spirit gives the impetus spirit gives the way spirit gives the means and we get to have the fun of dabbing in it and painting and creating the picture the way that we want so I see the the, the materials of the paint those are the gifts of spirit resources of every kind and then the brushes as I said the brushes is are the mind body and spirit in persistent application of our own effort. So we have to be involved. Without the brush, I mean, you could do finger painting. I think we're, we're going for something with a brush here means that this is my application. This is my persistent effort. It can sit here on the palette. I can acknowledge it. I can, be, I can think it's wonderful. I can be glad to tell everybody about the beautiful paints on my palette. But until I actually become engaged, and I'm the one doing it, I'm owning it, and I'm jumping into it, then we can actually, I can actually create something. We can create something together. This is, the, the brushes are what we do with it. It's treat and move your feet, as we say at the center. 
So we learn about it, we grow, we get a palette, we have a lot of paint. Now we move our feet, we got to stick the brush in there and start making some moves. Now, how do we know what we want to paint? Individually and as a community? Well, that remains to be seen. That we will discover over the next days, weeks, months, and years as we create and recreate our lives. We don't know necessarily right now maybe exactly what, and is that a problem? Maybe do I not know what? It is exactly that I want to paint, not necessarily. It is something I want to get there. I do want to know what I'm creating. I want to be an active part of it, but there may be times when I'm not sure exactly what that is. But I did think of something that would be good to know. How will we know if the painting that we're creating is good? How will we know that we're making progress in creating a painting, a new painting, a new picture for ourselves? that is actually supportive of our life, that helps us create a life that works for us and, and, and a world that works for everyone. How do we know that we're really doing that? I picture that if my painting is really good, I'm gonna be super, super grateful. I'm gonna be so happy. I'm gonna feel so fulfilled and satisfied. I'm gonna have a tremendous amount of thankfulness and gratitude because of how well it's going. And it's not easy to take a leap from the metaphor of painting into our lives. That is the way we want to feel, isn't it? We want to feel glad. We want to feel grateful. We want to feel blessed. We want to feel these things. And so taking a little bit of a, a cue from our teachings here at the Center for Spiritual Living, then I thought, well, that's really the place to start, isn't it? It's about the feelings of gratitude. And we hear about this in the fall, and I'm going to remind you right now because we teach it here at CSL Dallas. It's about gratitude. That's where we start. No matter what the picture is that we have right now, and even if we've already stretched the brand new white canvas over the frame, I'm starting with gratitude that I have a white, beautiful canvas. Or if I still have a picture that by necessity is full of a lot of things, I'm going to look through there until I can find and magnify and praise those for which I have gratitude now. Gratitude now. Because the universe can only add more to what I'm carrying in my consciousness. I'm attracting in my, in my world that which I'm carrying in my heart, in my mind, and in my spirit. So if I'm going to focus on being thankful focus on being grateful and I find the things which I can praise in my life, no matter what all my circumstances are, then what does the universe have to work with with me? More stuff that makes me grateful. I'm showing the universe I'm a gra grateful person. I'm a thankful person. This is what turns me on is feeling grateful and thankful. The universe says, I can help you do that. And more stuff shows up. Blobs of paint on the palette and a beautiful painting in life that I can co-create. And so can we all, as a community, when we take these metaphors, we work with them together. So I'm very optimistic about what we can do together as we are painting a new picture at CSL Dallas.